before this video starts, I'm gonna put this literally in the beginning of the video. If you guys didn't watch, well, this video here, there's a literally good thing that's gonna happen. Uh, I mentioned in the beginning of the video where I'm gonna be doing a live stream. All right, there's a live stream with a giveaway. There's gonna be a live stream of and a giveaway for the Game Awards on December seventh. So if you're gonna be watching the the game of the year and stuff on December seventh, guess what? I'm gonna be recording it, not recording it, streaming it. I'm gonna be streaming it, not recording it. Uh there's giveaways. So if you want giveaways, go check it out. Also, subscribe for those giveaways as well, because that's where I'm gonna be giving away the giveaway. The moment I hit the specific and I'm I'm out of subscriber. One giveaway, giveaway, giveaway each. So stay tuned for that. All right, back to the video. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Noff, and welcome to another tech video. Um, since we're going towards the end of the year, anyways, I decided to make the top ten best laptops you can get under one thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, and this is like a special edition video for the you know December. So this is the last laptop video I make for this year, showing the best options you can get. For Christmas, if you want to, or by the end of the year, uh, for a good price, or that hopefully will be a good price. I've chosen literally the best you can get, no matter what. Uh, even for the lowest, least best one, I just chose it because it just felt like a more proper choice for most people. Something that people would get and not be disappointed, uh, and or you know, not have a feeling like they, they could have got something better. I mean, they could have got something better but something that doesn't disappoint them that much or at all uh pretty much the best laptops in general no matter what even for the lowest price point so there's that now starting off with the list is going to be the msi thin gf 63 yes i mentioned this before it is not the best laptop you can get uh and if not this is the reason why it's the cheapest uh and i will get to the point of why it's actually more expensive than it should be but it does the job for the most part. You're going to have a great CPU. Well, the 12650H. And uh, this one, this time, comparing to the last, li you know, the last list where I put this laptop, I chose the 4060. Uh, might as well just spend a little bit more and get a 4060 and a one terabyte option. So it does have a 4060, but a 45 watts. So keep that in mind. So it's not the strongest 4060 in the world, but, you know, it's there um it, it's an 8 gigs gpu so there's that uh 16 gigs of ram and 144 hertz screen 1080p not the great or the greatest colors in the world though but you know it does a job for gaming i guess uh long story short if you're planning to buy something that's the cheapest uh even if you want to buy the 4050 which by the way it's like 900 bucks um you know it, it does the job the 4050 the 460 it's both versions there the idea is if you want to buy something that's cheaper can play games don't care about the rest it does a job um the port's also not that bad too but also not the greatest we're talking about a three usb type a five gigabit a type c also five gigabit supporting display out uh double dual all of your jacks so mic and headphones separately and hdmi 1.4 since it's 4k 30, 30 hertz there's that ethernet port and all that stuff so you know, the ports are not that bad. It's reasonable. Um, but, uh, yeah. Upgradability, there is, but not the best in the world. So, SATA upgradability, no M extra M.2. There's an M.2, but that's being used already, unless you want to change it. And then boot the new uh, boot drive. Anyways, the point is, it's there, but not the best. It's just there. You know, it's not that bad. So, if you're planning to buy something that's cheaper and does the job, recommend it. Now, if you're planning to spend a little bit more, then the next one on the list is in the number 9, which is the Acer Nitro 16. It's uh, it's an AMD laptop, so it supports the Ryzen, uh, Ryzen 7 7840HS, uh, but it's an 8-core processor, which is not bad. Uh, it's an RTX 4060 as well, and it's 16-inch, so I believe... It's 16 by 10? Yep, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which means it's 1920 by 1200 at 165 hertz and 16 gigs of RAM, but 512 gigs of NVMe SSD. Now, why would I recommend this more than the MSI one if you're planning to do more better gaming and even some professional work? Everything about it is better. 
I mean, even the CPU is, you know, still decent, very good. Sure, the, the, maybe the, the MSI is i7 slightly better, or maybe equal. But there's that. But it's an RTX 4060 at a higher wattage, I believe, like up to 70, 80 watts. So much higher. Maybe even 90, I don't remember very well. And better screen. I mean, not the best colors, I'm going to assume, but much better screen. 16 by 10 aspect ratio with 165 hertz. And sure, it's 512 gigs of SSD, but guess what? An extra M.2 connection. So plug in another SSD and there you go. So much faster than a SATA as, as well. So there's that. Uh, the ports are also good. Turns out whoever wrote this was wrong. Uh, anyways, so there's a Type-C port that supports for USB 4 connection. So it's 40 gigabits uh, with charging and power delivery up to 65, uh, 65 watts. Uh, another Type-C port, literally next, next to each other. That's Gen 2. But at least it supports, I believe, for display out. So there's that. Uh, one USB 2.0 port with, you know, but at least better USB Type-C ports. And as well as the Type-A ports, the other two. RUSB Gen 2, so that's 10 gigabits each as well. So while there's a USB 2.0 port, which is kind of sad, they give you a lot of USBs that are much faster. So it's kind of a fine sacrifice. I don't see why not just put a USB 2.0 port there if you give us much faster USBs, you know, the rest of USBs being much faster than the other one. So it's fine. Uh, and also there's a micro SD card, which is nice, and an audio jack. And an Ethernet port. So, overall... Oh, and also two, HDMI 2.1. I believe I already mentioned that. Anyways, even has an RGB keyboard. So, yeah. 400... 4,050 bucks. Now you're spending pretty much, what? 10, 20 dollars more. But you're getting much faster hardware in general. Uh, I would definitely recommend this more than the MSI one. Uh, unless you're getting the 4050 one, then... Yeah, get the MSI one. But if you're going to the 4060, get this guy. Sure, I mentioned the other one. Most because of the 4050 version. But the 4060 definitely going with this one. And also, it, it's an AMD choice. So if you want AMD, there's that. On the top 8 is the Asus VivoBook Pro 15X. It's an OLED laptop. So we finally went with OLED. Uh, with an i7-12650H. You know, not the best CPU, but also not the worst. It does the job. It's a 10 cores, 6 performance uh, for efficiency. It's good enough. With an RTX 3060, so it's much older GPU comparing to the 40 series. 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of NVMe SSD. So, if you're planning for more professional use, this is not only the best laptop on the list for professional use, at least for the screen wise, it's just the screen is amazing. So, we're talking about what? A 2880, uh, wait, what was it again? Uh, there you go, 2880 by 1620 uh, resolution. It's very, very high. It's always up to 2.8K resolution. So, very high resolution, very good for editing, to be honest. It, I believe this is the highest resolution of this list, if I'm not mistaken. So, there's that. Uh, it's also 120 hertz, which is kind of impressive. Yeah, 120 hertz. Uh, what I recommend for gaming, not so much. I believe the 36 is also not the highest wattage, too. Um, but, because of the screen and for what it is used for... I mean, it's literally just called a VivoBook Pro. It's literally for professional use also the ports are not, not that bad too it's actually really good so we're talking about a usb type a port with hdmi 2.1 usb type c gen 2 and a thumb thunderbolt 4 this time so much better than a usb 4 since it's more full featured compared to usb 4 it's same speed supposed to be but less features um another usb type a gen 1 port so yeah you you only get two usbs type a gen 1 ports a micro SD card, an Ethernet port, and all that. But, like I said, a Thunderbolt 4. So, like I said, this laptop is more towards professional use. If you want it for professional use, this is it. Uh, probably the best one in this list if you want it for professional use. If you're editing or doing some sort of graphical project, then, uh, yeah, first choice for sure. Now, if you're looking for a laptop that just screams, we have most things you need, then a Lenovo Legion 5 is probably the choice. Uh, it's just 15.6 inch, but it's 165 hertz at 1440p. It's a Ryzen 7 7735H, so I believe it's lower than the other one. But it's not the HS, so it's the highest wattage one, uh, but still 8 cores. Uh, it's an RTX 4060, but 140 40 watts, so it's the highest wattage. 32 gigs of RAM and a 1TB of NVMe SSD. Now, 
Lenovo usually have great screens, great specs. I mean, a 4060 at the highest wattage. And the ports are great on this thing. I mean, I, lo I love the Lenovo laptops back then because of the ports. And they still do a good job. So we're talking about four USB Type-A ports, Gen 1. Um, one USB Type-C Gen 2 and another USB Type-C Gen 2. So sure, no USB 4.0 or whatever. But you get two USB Type-C ports and four USB Type-A ports. Lots of USB ports. <laughs> we're talking about enough to plug in every single thing you want to. So if you want a device that can plug in most of the devices you have out, like keyboard, mouses, microphones, uh, capture cards, whatever you have into one device, this does it. Also USB, uh, uh, no, sorry, HDMI 2.1 ports, Ethernet ports, and all that. Most USB ports and overall good specs on a laptop definitely goes to the Lenovo Legion 5. Uh, sure, there are other options with better GPUs or whatever, but if you're looking for this price point and good overall specs, the Lenovo Legion just does not disappoint at all. At our number six is the Acer Predator Triton 14. It's a 14 inch, so it's the smallest screen in this list. Um, so if you're more into portability, this is the best one in terms of size. Uh, it has a 13 gen, so we're going with a much newer CPU. Uh, i7 13700H, so the strongest CPU of Intel in, at the moment at least. Um, better at least than the previous ones, but it has an RTX 4050. So if you want the size, also the screen resolution is 1920 by 1200, since it's 16 by 10 aspect ratio. I don't have 65 hertz, which is nice. And also supports G-Sync, which is also nice. 16 gigs of RAM and 500 gigs of, uh, 512 gigs of NVMe SSD. But again, back to the GPU. So if you're planning to get something the smallest at a fact that it's a 4050 then um honestly it's not a bad choice so again it's portable it's 14 inch is a much better screen actually comparing to the previous ones well except for some of the previous ones and a much faster cpu comparing to the previous one which is kind of crazy for this size so if you want something that has a much better cpu a very good screen but not the highest resolution just a great aspect ratio screen Again, small, uh, 4050, which is a decent gaming performance. Overall, wanting something small for a decent gaming experience, then definitely going with it. I know a lot of people that want something that's this size, but that performs very well for gaming. I have one person that I know that really needs something that's small, but good for gaming. Um, it does the job, it's really powerful. Back to the fact that small, though, the things that makes it bad is because it's small you lose a couple of things so in terms of the ports that's where i'm kind of you know not there uh <laughs> so you got a usb type a port that's gen 2 a thunderbolt type c port so that's uh that's good and the other side you get a hdmi 2.1 and a usb type c a type a port gen 2 as well and, and look at that it also comes on a micro sd card and that's pretty much it so you lose Ethernet port, most because of the size, and uh, only USB Type A ports. That's just you know two ports only. That that's it. Uh, and a USB Type C port that's in, that's Thunderbolt four. So that's uh, that's pretty much it though. The ports are minimal but good. It's just not the best. Uh, again, there's no Ethernet port because of the size. You might want to get a you know, a USB hub, or more rather, a Thunderbolt hub, if you want to spend a little bit more. Um, so you can get the most of ports. Other than that, it's, you know, the the idea is portability at the size. So, you know. Uh, overall, though, I still believe it's a great choice in the list. I mean, it's small, it's very good, very powerful, even though it's the least compared to the rest, but still very powerful for a 4050 laptop. Um, the speed is great, and the screen is not that bad, it's really good. So, I know a lot of people that want this size, and for this size, with the performance, and also it should be keyboard, I guess. Um, definitely recommend it for those who want something that's small, for gaming, and, oh, look at that, for creators as well. So, there's that. I know one friend that wants something like this. Now, going back to a much bigger laptop, that will be the next one on the list, and it's the Asus Tough F15. It's a New model, it's 15.6 inches at 144 hertz. With that said, it's also the upgraded version since the ASUS finally decided to put a really good color accurate screen in the ASUS stuff laptops. Back then, they didn't actually have a good screen. 
Uh, 12th gen, so it's an i7 12700H this time. So it's a 14 cores comparing to the 10 cores of the previous laptops, um, except for the Acer one. And it's an RTX 4070. So this is this is where we're getting to the better GPU parts. So 4070 at a, I believe, like 90 watts. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM and 1 terabyte of NVMe SSD. So, they upgraded this laptop by a lot compared to the previous ones. The Asus stuff was pretty much the worst choices ever until the 40. I don't know if they went to the 3060 where they the 30 series where they actually improved it, but the 40 series they improved it by a lot. So not only the screen got better, but the ports got better by a lot. USB Type A Gen 1 port on the side. The other side you get. Uh, an Ethernet port, HDMI 2.0, there's that though. Uh, Thunderbolt 4, so you get a Thunderbolt connection. And another USB Type-C port, Gen 2, with support of display out. And G-Sync, which is nice. And another USB Gen 1 Type-A port, also an audio jack. So yeah, a little bit minimal, but they increased it by a lot. Back then you would get like a USB 2.0 and a Gen Type-C port was like Gen 1, whatever. So they increase it by a lot. If not, the, finally, for the first time ever, the Asus Stuff series are actually a good choice. So if you're planning to get something that's cheaper compared to the rest with a great GPU and a good CPU and a decent ports, definitely recommend it. There are slightly better options out there, and this is where I'm going to get to the next ones, but definitely recommend it. Uh, Good job, Asus. So you finally made the Tough series something that's worth buying. Now, our fourth one on the list is the MSI Creator M16. While the Asus Vivo Bulk is the first one, this one is the second one for a reason. So it's a thing by 10 aspect ratio, so it's 2560 by 1600, uh, 60 hertz. So there's that, and it's more towards content creators because of first the screen resolution is much better, and it's also the CIP3 100%. So not an OLED screen, but very color accurate for an IPS LCD screen. Um, it's also 13 Gen CPU, but I believe it's uh, 13 620H. Uh, pretty much similar to the 12 650. Um, but there's that. It's an RTX 4060 though, so GPU-wise is much better. And if you have something that's more graphically dense, definitely much better choice compared to the 3060. 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte of NVMe SSD. The screen is also 128 degrees, so if you want to make it flat to let the other ones see the what you're doing, there's that. But while internally spec is much better than the ASUS one, um, the screen and the ports are downgrade compared to the ASUS one. So again, it it supports for uh, two USB Type A ports and one. A USB 2.0 port and a USB Gen 1 Type C port and an HDMI port, I believe 2.1. So there's that one thing. Um, and an Ether port. So if you're planning to buy something that towards creators that's a big screen and well has a much better spec internally, sure. Uh, the resolution and color accuracy is not bad, but it's no OLED screen and you know. It's a second choice for creators. So if you're playing for creating high-end video or high-end videos, uh, good videos, something like that uh, with really great colors, uh, the OLED of the Asus is much better. But there's another thing. If you want something that lasts longer as well, then sure, you could go with the MSI Creator M16. It's not bad. It does a job for creators, but I wouldn't really recommend it. But, you know, it's... Um, it's a much better option comparing to other laptops if you're planning to do creation other than the Asus one. So definitely recommend it if you want something bigger and that does the job for the most part. Now, the third one on our list is going to be the Asus ROG Strix G15 uh, Advantage Edition. So older specs, but it's Asus ROG Strix. So 300 hertz, so the fastest screen on the list, uh, 15.6 inches. So there's that at 1080p. A Ryzen 9 5900HX, 8, so old but still a very good uh, AMD processor. Eight cores though. And this is the first one in this list that has an AMD GPU. So an AMD Ry uh, Radeon RX 6800M, uh, so 12 gigs of VRAM, so the highest VRAM on the list as well. And uh, yeah, great screen, decent spec, all, even though it's older. And... Um, 
Well, I mean, the ports are also not that bad uh, for the most part. So there's uh, one Type A port, Gen 1, Type C port, Gen 2, and Ether port, HDMI 2.0B, though. Um, type, you know, it's not that great to bring the rest one. Uh, another is two USBs, Type A ports, Gen 1, and an RGX. So it's. The ports are not that bad. Uh, the specs is also not that bad. It's. It's a laptop that towards people who want a fully AMD laptop. It's a great screen, very great, probably one of the best ones in the list as well, um, in terms of the speed at least. And, um, you know, it's an AMD graphics card that's 12 gigs. So it does a job if you're planning to buy something that does the job as well as being great screen. And also it's an Asus ROG Strix. <laughs> yeah, it's a laptop towards AMD users. If you're an AMD fan, Definitely recommend it. Now for the last two of the laptops in this list. Uh, long story short, the price is not there because I kind of forgot to record this a bit early. But these two these two laptops on the list is or was 1500 bucks or 1499 So there's that. So keep that in mind. It used to be that price point. That's why I'm keeping them in the list in the first place. Second on the list is going to be the Acer Predator Helio 16. It's a 13 Gen i7-13. 700HX, so it's the fastest CPU on the list, um, with an RTX 4070 at a highest wattage as well. It's a 16 inch, so that means a 2560 by 1600, so 16 by 10 aspect ratio with a with 240 hertz uh, refresh rate, do you think as well? 16 gigs of RAM, DDR5, and a one terabyte of NVMe SSD. So, like I said, these are the two best laptops you can get in terms of raw performance. So. You get a 16 inch, 16 by 10 aspect ratio with a great resolution at a high refresh rate. Very good CPU, very good GPU, and overall, just the strongest spec laptop. Uh, the ports on this thing is also good. Oh, wow, two Thunderbolt ports <laughs> and HDMI 2.1. So, two fast Thunderbolt ports. Uh, ah. Kind of lost me in there. Uh, one, two, and three USBs 3.2, but two of them are Gen 2. Well, the other ones are, well, the, uh, the one is Gen 1. A micro SD card, an Ethernet port, an HDMI 2.1, and overall, very good USB connections. Like, you talk about very good ports in general. And two Thunderbolt ports. Two. This is the best laptop on the list. <laughs> well, one of the two best laptops on the list. We're going to get to that in a bit. And that bit is now. So we're talking about the Gigabyte Aorus 15. Um, it's similar. I mean, comparing to the Acer, Acer one in some ways. So it's an I uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, th though, this time. So 2560 by 1440 and 165 hertz. So it's less in terms of the screen. And RTX 4070, though, at the highest wattage as well. An i7 13700H, so a less powerful version compared to the 13700HX. 16 gigs of RAM and a 1TB of NVMe SSD. So, also the same price point when I saw it last time. The reason why I put this guy as first is a Gigabyte laptop. I really like Gigabyte laptops, they're not that bad. The other thing would be the ports. So, you get a USB Gen 2 Type-C port, 1, 2, 3 USB Type-A ports, but also same idea, two USB Gen Type Gen One, Gen Two Type A ports, one Gen One and an audio jack, as well as a Type C port, but Thunderbolt. So not two Thunderbolts, one Type C and a one Thunderbolt, comparing to the previous one with two Thunderbolts. But you get an HDMI 2.1 and a mini Display Port. Yes, I kept this one on the list because there's a mini Display Port. I'm just saying you can now connect device or more displays on this laptop. So uh, the Thunderbolt supports for display out. And I believe the Gen 2 Type-C port also supports for this display out. But with the Type-C ports, you can connect to one, two, three, four. You can have five screens in one with this laptop. So this is the reason why I kept this on the list. It, it's great. The ports are the best in the world, but you can connect up to multiple display outs. Sure, the Actually, the Thunderbolt ports of the Acer one, you can also do the same thing. But even though you kind of just have a mini display port instead of have to use the Thunderbolt to connect two screens. So I can do the same idea here. So personally, I feel like it's a much better idea 
Uh, I believe you can even connect even more port, more screens on this thing. I'm not sure though. I've never tested it. But overall, the reason why I kept this laptop is because of the mini display port and the specs is not that bad. And it's a gigabyte laptop. I just felt like it was a good idea to put them in the list. So two of the best laptops, Acer and the gigabyte. These are the best laptops. But I really like gigabyte though. That is it for today's episode. I think this video might be a little bit longer than it should be. But this is it. This is the best top 10 best laptops you can get in 2023 or by the end of 2023. Um, I just feel like the list here is not that bad. Most of the laptops are great options. Maybe the MSI one might be, the MSI creator one might be a least best, op best option though. But most of them have the idea and the reason for them to exist. Uh, like I said, each one has its purpose, except for the MSI one. Most of the laptops on the list is for its purpose. Uh, each one for its size, its specs, its reason, depending on what you're going to be using it for, it's there. So there's that. Uh, if you guys want to see more of this video, comment down below, share this video, give a like. Of course, this video is special for this year since we're almost at the end of 2023. Uh, this is not the only tech video I'm going to be doing for the December event. So there's that. Um, if you guys want to see more, comment down below, share this video, give a like. Uh, remember to subscribe, share this video. Uh, and uh, yeah, share the video. <laughs> also, remember to subscribe because, I got, like I said, there's going to be a giveaway. So don't don't miss that out. So yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to check the laptops, description down below. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I don't know why I have to repeat that again. And I'll see you guys in the next video.